So now let's take a look at our article risk parity, which was some kind of a breakthrough in uh, portfolio theory and uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, advantages in applying uh, one of the biggest breakthroughs in applying machine learning and portfolio optimization. Uh, so this algorithm was introduced by Marcos Lopez de Prado and particularly for this algorithm, uh, he was awarded the Quant of the Year award. So the HLP algorithms aims to solve some of the issues with the new approach based on the notion of hierarchy. So actually it can be computed in three main steps. So the first step is hierarchical clustering, which break that breaks down cluster, which breaks down our assets into hierarchical clusters. Secondly, it applies quasi-diagonalization, which organizes the covariance matrix, places similar assets together. After that, it applies recursive bisection, which uh, where uh, weights are assigned um, to each asset in our portfolio. So as we have discussed previously in our lecture, we uh, saw that mean variance optimization lacks the hierarchy approach. So on the one hand, we have quite good ways still to estimate the dependence between two assets, like Pearson, linear Pearson correlation. But on the other way, our covariance matrices are lacking the hierarchy um, information. So and combining these two uh, approaches would be a great way to uh, improve the optimization algorithms. So that's what actually hierarchical risk parity does for us. So our hierarchical clustering is used to place our assets into clusters suggested by the data. So we still use the covariance and correlation matrix to build the clusters. So the objective of this step is to build a hierarchical tree in which our assets are all clustered on different levels. So the distance matrix is used as input for clustering. And there are a few widely used methods for calculating the measure of distance or similarity within the algorithm. So if you remember the uh, theory implied uh, correlation matrix, we already did, uh, we have performed several steps uh, from this algorithm. So we already converted our correlation matrix into distance matrix between, uh, because distance, uh, distance matrices um, uh, preserved several um, important statistical properties uh, which make uh, working with them much easier comparing to correlation matrices. We already uh, applied linkage of objects to a distance matrix and we'll do the same thing here in hierarchical risk parity. So hierarchical risk parity uses a, a set of um, hierarchical agglomerative clustering techniques uh, to uh, build a so-called dendrogram of uh, uh, assets and uh, to build hierarchical clustering. So let's discuss what kind of linkages can be used uh, in this type of algorithm. So first and quite widely used uh, type of linkage is so-called single linkage. So single linkage is a distance between two clusters. Uh, uh, so the distance between two clusters is the minimum distance between any two points uh, in the clusters. So that is the way how the distance uh, is measured in single linkage. In complete linkage, the distance is the maximum of the distance between any two points in the clusters. Average linkage, uh, for average linkage, the distance between two clusters is the average of the distance between any two points in the clusters. And the final um, approach is a court word linkage, uh, which uh, calculates the distance is the increase of the squared error for, uh, from when two clusters are merged. So in Portfolio Lab, you can also specify what type of linkage you would like to use in, um, uh, in the algorithm. So as we have discussed on the first step, we convert our correlation matrix into distance matrix and apply linkage on top of that. So when you apply linkage, and hierarchical clustering to your um, to your data set, you can actually build a so-called dendrogram of your assets. So that's actually what is the view of our algorithm on our uh, on our assets. So what it does, it groups our our assets into clusters. So that's where our algorithm starts to think not only in terms of correlations but also in terms of hierarchies. So here. Um, uh, also in Portfolio Lab, you, you can build dendrogram of uh, assets from HRP algorithm, and we will show you the methods which are used for that. 
So here in uh, uh, this uh, picture, you can see the dendrogram, which created a very um, beautiful clusters of assets. So US bonds form a separate clusters, uh, French bonds also sell, solve uh, separate clusters. Here we can see gold, CRB, we can see S&P 500 and Russell uh, 2000 as a separate uh, cluster, which is actually included in a quite big cluster of equities. So as you can see, the distance between equities and uh, US treasuries, treasuries is relatively, um, so they are uh, situated uh, on a relatively far uh, distance because this is actually how it is in a uh, real trading ecosystem is. So here on a high level view, we can see three big clusters, like well, I would say four, right? So gold, CRB, big equity cluster, French bonds cluster, and US notes cluster. We could, what we can also see is that MSCI emerging markets uh, are not far away from FTSE small cap, FTSE euro stocks and euro stocks. So the clustering is extremely logical to any uh, financial analysts who knows how the uh, asset classes um, work and link together because uh, FTSE is quite close by its risk and returns and correlations to euro stock market rather than as a, uh, rather than us stock market so us stock market forms like quite like uh, quite um, i would say quite uh, distant uh, cluster of equities despite the fact both um, FTSE, euro stocks and s&p 500 are very are quite far away from bonds because this is a completely different type of investing. So, and that's what actual dendrogram shows to us uh, is that FTSE is quite close to euro stocks uh, and uh, um, US equities form a distant cluster, but all of them are quite far away from both French bonds and US bonds. On the other hand, US bonds are uh, much closer to French bonds rather than gold and uh, any equities uh, in this investment universe. So on the second uh, on the second step, once our assets are clustered into hierarchical tree, hierarchical tree, we can now perform our quasi diagonalization procedure. So in this step, we rearrange the rows and columns of the covariance matrix of assets so that we place similar assets together and dissimilar assets further apart. So once completed, the step rearranges our covariance matrix in such a way so that the larger covariances in our matrix are placed along the diagonal while the smaller ones spread around this diagonal. So on the, uh, on the uh, right hand side, you can see the covariance matrix before quasi diagonalization. And um, actually on the left hand side, you can see the covariance matrix uh, before quasi diagonalization. And on the right hand side, you can see after. So actually what it does, uh, it applies the logic of our um, uh, view on uh, the on the clusters on the on the dendrogram of and our hierarchy into a covariance matrix so what it does it just takes these covariances which are not far away uh, from each other and starts to group them so as you can see here now our covariance matrix is much more clustered and we can see some beautiful, uh, beautiful different covariance clusters in this covariance matrix rather than this uh, type of matrix. So here you can see uh, this uh, relatively big cluster, which is uh, which consists of IEF, TLT, TIP, LQD, and BND, which are basically U.S. bonds. And here you can see quite the big equities equities cluster which corresponds to um, equity stocks, which are also uh, form uh, several different groups inside of, inside of this, this cluster. So that's what actually quasi diagonalization does. It rearranges our covariance matrix. And now it starts looking as not only a covariance dependence matrix, but also it um, shows some hierarchy um, properties uh, when uh, we apply quasi-diagonalization on top of that. 
So on the third step and the final step, the actual portfolio weights are assigned to our assets in a top-down recursive manner. So by performing this step, we break each cluster into sub-clusters by starting with our largest cluster and moving down our tree in a top-down manner. So recursive bisection makes use of quasi-diagonalized covariance matrix for recursing into the clusters under the assumption that for diagonal matrix, the inverse variance allocation is the most optimal allocation. So if you remember, uh, in the first part of our lecture, we, we discussed relatively uh, efficient method of finding the um, optimal uh, portfolio weights by using the inverse variance. So what the algorithm does is it goes through our dendrogram of clustered assets. It calculates the variance of the uh, dendrogram uh, cluster. But what it does, why it is called recursive bisection, because each time it splits our, uh, so uh, each time it splits uh, our dendrogram into two parts, into two parts, and because it uh, it uh, do, does that from top uh, from top to down, it is called recursive. So it go goes from the root of our dendrogram, splits uh, into two clusters. Uh, uses the inverse variance algorithm to detect uh, cluster weights, and after that, it then uh, splits them further and further. So, actually, in uh, which is very important in HRP algorithm, our split decision is based on the number of assets. So, what it does, it um, when it goes deeper in our dendrogram, uh, it always makes a choice of uh, splitting into two assets. So it goes into two, 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 and uh, uses uh, inverse variance to find optimal weights. What this approach is, why this approach is so efficient, because on the one hand, it uses the covariance matrix and the correlation matrices to find the dependency between two assets. On the other hand, it uses, um, um, it, it uses uh, the hierarchy structure and unsupervised machine learning algorithm. But what is what is the most important approach here is that because we use this hierarchy uh, hierarchical approach, our portfolios, which are formed by HRP algorithm, are much less concentrated comparing to mean variance optimization. Because first, the algorithm allocates weights uh, into the on, on the cluster level. And only after that, it spreads these weights into, um, into individual uh, stocks. So if we take a look at this dendrogram, the algorithm on the first step will first define the weight for this big cluster and for this big cluster. So for example, 60 to, I don't know, 40. After that, this these 40% uh, will be um, split uh, based on inverse variance for uh, French bonds cluster and US bonds cluster and 40% will be split into um, gold cluster and equities cluster. And why this algorithm is so efficient? Be because it generates much less concentrated portfolios because uh, these, these weights are uh, spread on the cluster level rather than a just covariance level. So there is no uh, way that uh, FTSE, uh, for example, can get 30 or 40 or 40 percent because they do not form a very distant cluster. So at the end, this, for example, 60 percent percent will be uh, split uh, into this cluster and this cluster. And at the end, for example, FTSE, Eurostox and Eurostox uh, small will get no more than, I don't know, like 5 percent just because they do not form a distant cluster. And at the end, we won't have a very serious uh, overweight on equities, just because we have already split our weights on higher cluster levels. But actually, still, there are some disadvantages of um, hierarchical risk parity algorithm, which are addressed in hierarchical equal risk contribution algorithm. But before that, let's take a look at the portfolio labs implementation of uh, HRP algorithm and take a look at function calls. <laughs> 
So let's take a look at our article risk parity algorithm. So here uh, it is implemented in our article risk parity algorithm and it uses uh, the standard API of portfolio lab with allocate method. So as the parameters it uh, takes as input your uh, asset names, you can either specify your asset prices or your uh, asset returns, or you can uh, use either specified covariance matrix. Because as we have discussed, you can estimate your covariance matrix in so many different ways. You can estimate it from um, using Pearson correlation. You can find the, uh, you can use various nonlinear dependence matrix uh, to build correlation matrix. And after that, convert it into covariance matrix. You can, for example, denoise detone or shrink your covariance matrix and allocate methods give you the flexibility to use that so if you are, if you just use the asset prices and asset returns it will calculate vanilla uh, vanilla covariance matrix and uh, generate uh, the uh, allocations based on that but if you would like to to you to input your uh, own either denoised or detoned or zero implied correlation matrix which, which can be also converted into covariance matrix you can put uh, it into covariance matrix parameter parameter you can also uh, specify the distance matrix because as we, we have discussed you can uh, also um, generate uh, different distance matrices also by denoising, detoning your correlation matrix, you can use different distance matrix, uh, which uh, are used to um, create uh, to create a distance matrix. So for example, you can use a vanilla angular distance, but you can also use absolute angular distance, squared angular distance. You can use uh, your custom angular distance. So basically distance matrix, uh, gives you a very high flexibility. A very short note, um, which I have forgot to tell about, is that covariance matrix, uh, it is, it is, you, you shouldn't use a nonlinear um, method to estimate your covariance matrix because it is rather used to find inverse variance um, allocations, but you can play around massively with your distance matrix because as we have discussed, there are many ways to form correlation matrix so for example, you can use Pearson linear correlation, information variation, normalized mutual information. You could, for example, denoise and detone that. After that, convert it into distance matrix and use it as input into your HLP algorithm. On the other hand, you can use theory implied correlation matrix, convert it into distance matrix and use as input to HLP algorithm. You can also use sideways with asset mates in index and the value of one for buy and minus one for sell. And on the final parameter, which we have also discussed is linkage. So you can either use single, average, complete or word linkage to uh, specify what kind of linkage you would like to have in your HRP algorithm. So this is the implementation of HRP algorithm and uh, it works extremely well and uh, it generates quite diversified and uh, and various and good portfolios which actually outperform on out of sample. And uh, that's how Portfolio Lab implements this algorithm. But still, there are several disadvantages of this algorithm which are addressed in hierarchical equal risk contribution algorithm, which is called HERC. 